my manager saw a model like this in a video, I'd be in trouble. Today I'm going to show you some of the preferred settings me and the rest of the team over here have found to make working in Fusion 360 an aesthetically pleasing experience. First off, the grid. Sometimes it's handy, like when sketching, but right now it's not adding value, so let's address that first. These settings will be found in the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen, making it simple to toggle off or back on. While we're here, let's look at some other settings, like incremental move and snap to grid. To do this, I'll start a sketch, and as I go to drop the line endpoint down, you can see my mouse jumping from grid location to grid location. It becomes more apparent as I continue making the line. This snapping is similar to the grid, nice at times, but generally it causes more mouse jitter than I like. The nice thing is I can turn it off, mid-command, giving that smooth movement I prefer. Incremental move is similar. As I go to slide this line, it's jumping by a half inch at a time, depending on zoom level. To shut that off, I'll go to the same menu. Okay, so all that grid and jumping has been dealt with, so let's look at some other settings. The next button over in the navigation bar houses many options where we differ from the default. The visual style is one of the exceptions. Shaded with visible edges gives a nice color display with clearly defined edges. So we'll keep that as is. Mesh display and environment will keep default as well, but in effects we'll make a couple changes. Starting with turning off the ground plane, which takes the related ground shadow along with it. Two settings we definitely want on are ambient occlusion and anti-aliasing. Ambient occlusion gives incredible lifelike shading as demonstrated with the example on the left, and more specifically on areas of the model where faces can cast light onto other faces like this cavity here. To further improve the appearance, we also recommend turning anti-aliasing on. While this is harder to notice immediately, you can really understand what it does by taking a screenshot of an edge and enhance. 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 Now, we can see what this actually does. The edge on the left, the one with anti-aliasing turned on, features a nice gradual transition versus the hard edge on the right that doesn't use this option. Next up are the camera settings. Here we have three options, orthographic, perspective, and perspective with orthographic faces. Eventually we'll settle on the latter, but let's first understand the three. Starting with perspective, this gives a lifelike appearance that things get smaller as they get further away, which really does look great until you look at it straight on. The problem is that these edges that appear to angle back really point directly at this face. This becomes problematic when or if you want to project something like this onto a sketch. On the flip side, in our preferred setting, perspective with orthographic faces, the illusion that those edges are angled is cleared up. This can make for a more predictable behavior. Which might beg the question, well, why don't you just use orthographic all the time? Well, it's up to you, but this is just so flat in appearance, it almost looks fake. Perspective with orthographic faces balances this well. Anyway, let's delete that sketch out and go look at this from the home position again. Now it's time we deal with that 500 shades of gray look. A real quick way to deal with this is color component cycling. Shift N for those who like keyboard shortcuts or found in the inspect dropdown. But a better way to give color is to apply appearances from the newly searchable library. We'll throw a little color on this, starting with the riser. We'll make that red, then moving up in the assembly we'll add some blue to the base. In no time at all, this is starting to look more realistic and that ambient occlusion takes it to a whole new level. But let's now dig into the preferences. These will play less into how Fusion looks and more into how it behaves by default. I will not be digging into this in complete detail, but instead show you a couple options to be aware of. Starting with the general settings, this graphics driver setting I've been told to always leave in the default of auto select. Next up, offline cache time period, which controls how much data will be stored locally and for what time history. The max here is 360 days in my tests, but in my personal opinion, if I haven't opened a file and used it in the last two months, what are the chances I'll need it the next time I'm offline? Automatic recover save interval is another to be aware of. Reducing this will help ensure that in the event of an issue, significant work won't be lost. The drawback to this is that I could potentially add unnecessary overhead on your hardware. The rest I'll leave as default. Although it took some getting used to, the pan, zoom, and orbit defaults are now second nature and the constraint orbit I cannot live without. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but I do prefer it. In the design subsection, I'll change the default workspace to modeling and select to allow 3D sketching. Even if I use it sparingly at this time due to limitations, 3D sketching has potential to add significant power. In drawings, I'll just verify that inherit from design is selected and default materials can be selected here. This is another quick way to lose that gray on gray look that I was so complimentary of earlier. In graphics, I'll make a couple of changes 
transparency effect I'll change to better display, and I'll increase the minimum frame rate during navigation. This will turn off visual effects like ambient occlusion if the frames per second drops below a threshold. If you're wishing to always see those effects, you can clear the toggle above. Similarly, you can tie this effect switch to memory availability. However, if you clear this, it could potentially make Fusion less stable, so it's not recommended. Unit and value display is completely up to you and or your company standards, and the same goes with default units, which can be specified depending on workspace. Finally, in preview, I would recommend you turn on all of these. Having colored sketch entities, depending on constraint status, is so helpful. Seeing upcoming CAM technology is nice. Live reviews are great for collaborative efforts. The Mesh workspace brings Mesh Mixer type capabilities to modify and repair STLs and OBJs. And seeing early releases of advanced simulation types is incredible. If you haven't tried a shape optimization, it will blow your mind. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope you like this insight into our setting preferences. But they are just that, our preferences.